Have you ever seen your great, 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 great grandma? You don't have access but to a DNA? I know scientifically, I, w- I would have to have one to be here. Though. How, 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 well, I don't know. <laughs> See, that's the point. Using the terminology here. Scientifically, you have no clue. You have no clue. Scientifically, you're dumb. You're just, you're just dumb on this position. Hey everyone, I'm Secular Spirit. And that was a wonderful clip from a video I watched on YouTube years ago called Muslim destroys atheism and it's a pretty popular video one of those videos that surfaces on my feed every couple of years I think it has 700,000 views and I always wanted to talk about it and I saved it for just this particular occasion and I thought it'd be interesting to kind of explore the viewpoint of Muslims when it comes to defending their faith based on logic and reason so you'll find Muslims who appeal to faith and then there's a lot of Muslims especially in this day and age who try to justify their belief in Islam through logic and reason as we'll see in this video very shortly See, This is the thing right because we're born in the West in Britain. Yeah, religion gets attacked all the time You have Richard Dawkins. You've heard of Richard Dawkins. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I call him Richard Dawkins. Yeah (laughs) Dawkins Dawkins Very clever. I see what you did there I mean, of all the criticisms that Richard Dawkins has gone over the years from Muslims, that's probably the best criticism I've heard yet. And some of you might recognize that our Muslim comedian over here is the pretty popular and well-known Muslim preacher, public speaker by the name of Hamza Tsortsis. He's a convert to Islam and he has a pretty big following on Twitter, twice the size of Muhammad Hijab's following actually. And as we can also see, he has a master's in philosophy. Woo. And before I continue the rest of the video to hear what Tsortsis says about the logical proofs of Islam, I want you to note how it doesn't matter if you're just a high school dropout or if you got a master's degree or a PhD or whatever. A good argument is still a good argument and a bad argument full of assumptions is still a bad argument full of assumptions. So let's see what Tsortsis has to say. We are brought up thinking that everything that we must verify has to be touch and feel. Yeah. yeah. But let me tell you something. If God could be touched and felt and seen, would that be God? No, not would, that, would that be it God? It wouldn't really be a test of belief, would it? Because you would know It's, it's not even a test of belief because God actually says there's good reasons to believe in him. For example, yeah. look. So, <laughs> in what's going to become very clearly a pattern, the person in the middle who seems to be an atheist or someone who's debating converting to Islam can't really get a word in in this supposed conversation with Tsortsis. Tsortsis just it continuously interrupts him which is why with the power of the internet and editing I will be able to interrupt him as I see fit but let's let him continue do you believe you had a great 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 grandma no do you believe I mean, a... yeah but I mean there's it's obviously I know that because of why? I'm here now oh, exactly yeah, but... but that's exactly the point have you ever seen your great 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 grandma? You don't have access but to a DNA. I know a scientifically, I would I would have to have one to be here. How how, how well, I don't know. <laughs> See, that's the point. Using the terminology here, scientifically, you have no clue. You have no clue. Scientifically, you're dumb. You're just you're just dumb on this position. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're dumb on this position because what does science say? Science say we can only verify the physical world with things that we can touch and feel. We can only verify the physical world with things. We can touch and feel? What? So this guy has a master's in philosophy, but he clearly skipped science class. Let's let him continue. The only way you know you got a great, 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 great grandma is because you're here. You've made a logical, rational decision. Not based on the physical world, based on necessity. Hmm. If it's necessary your great 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 grandmother existed in order for you to be here. You can't see her. But if someone said she never existed, you say, get lost, man, you're crazy. Okay, 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 we gotta stop here for just a moment. So I just have to point out that Sorts' description of the scientific method here is really limited and not broad enough. So when he talks about how a great 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 grandmother can't be physically verified, just because we can't touch and feel this deceased ancestor doesn't mean we don't have all sorts of ways to know that she exists. 
And I mean, beyond touching and feeling, what about hearing and seeing? But I get his point. I get his point. So the thing is about science is that we have so many different ways to measure and observe things beyond literally just being able to touch and hold and look at something. Ancestry can be verified in so many indirect ways, like DNA or historical records, or even just looking at other creatures like flies that have very short lifespans. And we can see that they breathe and create new generations over and over and over again, and that that extends to us human beings as well, clearly. That's the thing that sorts of seems to be missing about the scientific method. Oftentimes, the scientific method works as a combination of empirical evidence we observe and measure, as well as hypotheses and logical reasoning that we use to then test this data that we empirically observe. And it's a continuous cycle. And the cycle is constantly self-improving. When we discover something that doesn't match our hypothesis in the empirical evidence, we start from square one, and maybe we'll figure something else out the next time. And it just keeps going like that. And when Sorts has talked about how we can only verify things in the physical world that we can touch and feel, or let's say, actually observe, maybe think of this incredible method that scientists have used to find out if a star that's beyond our solar system has any planets. So what they'll do is they'll actually observe the wobble of a star. And from that wobble, they can determine that there's a planet that has a gravitational pull that is impacting that star. And by monitoring this wobble and calculating the extent of the wobble, they can actually measure the size of the planet without being able to actually see it. It's incredible. But anyway, the reason why Sorcis is going into all this stuff about how we can't actually see our great, 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 great grandmother or whatever is because he extends the same thing to God. Do you see my point? Yeah. So the point is, we don't need physical evidence all the time to come to conclusions. Exactly the same thing with God. As you said, cause and effect, creator and created. Mm. Now, the thing about this is that Sorcis is somehow comparing the very mundane claim that someone had an ancestor to the claim that there had to be a creator of the entire universe. So the first claim is pretty mundane, but the second one is pretty extraordinary. And I think, as the old saying goes, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. So let's hear this evidence that Sortis is going to present to us. Let's put it this way. Everything in the universe, dude, that begins to exist, okay, if I just popped like this, here I am, I just popped into existence, has a cause. You know it must have came from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Everything that begins, that starts to exist, always has a cause. Number two, the universe, without a shadow of a doubt now, began to exist. Based on philosophy, mathematics, Big Bang. You know about the Big Bang, yeah? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> It's not that thing after too many curries, right? <laughs> <sighs> really? This guy missed his calling. He should have been a stand-up comedian, clearly. <laughs> yeah, the Big Bang, okay? So from all this, we know the universe began to exist. So what logically follows? Therefore, the universe has a cause. So we just say, right, without a doubt, we know the universe has a cause. Wait, 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 wait. Hold your horses. There's so many unfounded assumptions going on right now, I can't even keep track. So everything in the universe that begins to exist has a cause. Maybe? We don't know that much about the universe, so I don't know if we can definitively say that to be a fact. But let's just proceed. So... The thing is, sorts of says this about the universe itself. The universe began to exist, so therefore it must have a cause. The thing is, even if we observe that everything within the universe has a cause, that doesn't necessarily mean it also applies to the universe. I used this example in my previous video, but it's like describing the contents of a basket and using that to describe the basket itself. It doesn't work. Just because we see the laws of cause and effect within the universe, that doesn't mean that the laws of cause and effect apply to the universe itself. And with the claim that the universe began to exist, the problem is, as I've also mentioned in previous videos, that the Big Bang Theory has limited explanatory power. It can't rule out possibilities like an infinite cycle of Big Bangs. It doesn't say anything about the nature of what caused the Big Bang, or if anything external had to cause it also. It's possible that whatever caused the Big Bang ceased to exist the moment the Big Bang happened. It isn't necessarily the case that the cause of the Big Bang still continues to exist at this present moment. What is the nature of this cause? 
Well, if you create the universe, it can't be part of the universe. Because if it's part of the universe, then that would mean the universe existed and didn't exist at the same time. Madness. Does that make sense? No. That's just crazy. Madness. Can Abu Bakr exist and not exist at the same time? Don't make no Although sense. we may want him not to exist. He, talk, <laughs> he talks a lot. Yeah, yeah I'm kidding. Oh, he's the one who talks a lot. Oh, okay. Got it. So there's that. It must be one. Because they're knocking on the door. We don't assume there's Manchester United football pitch, uh, football team behind, uh, behind the door, right? We, we say it's one person, isn't it? Yeah? Yeah. It's the most logical explanation. We know it must be all powerful. He didn't create the grain of sand, he created the whole universe, right? Yeah. And we know it must be uncreated. Because some people say, well, who created God? It must be uncreated, why? I don't know why. But let me give you an example. Say I want to shoot you, yeah? Yeah. Good style like this, yeah? <laughs> yeah? Hackney style. <laughs> but before I could shoot, I have to ask Abu Bakr for permission. Abu Bakr, can I shoot the geezer? He says, he says, wait, I need to ask someone behind me to shoot. And that guy has to ask permission too. If that goes on forever, could I shoot you? No. <laughs> Impossible. Exactly the same thing with the universe. The question of saying who created God is equivalent of saying there is no creation. Because you need a final point. Because if it went on forever, we would never have creation in the first place. Here's my problem with these hypothetical examples, like the one that was just offered here about someone having to ask permission to shoot someone and this just goes on for infinity. Similar hypothetical examples have been used by the likes of Christian apologist William Lane Craig to show that an infinity is impossible, thus proving there has to be a God. The thing is, each hypothetical example only shows that infinity is absurd in that one context. You still have to demonstrate how you can say that as a blanket rule for everything in the universe, let alone about the universe itself, which as we've already talked about, doesn't necessarily have to follow the laws of cause and effect. Why should we infer from such a hypothetical example that the universe can't be infinitely old? And as we've seen, with the evidence that we currently have, we can't definitively rule out that the universe or something has always existed, which eliminates the need for an uncaused first cause. So look what we've just done, just very simply. We've said there's a cause for the universe. It must be one powerful, and uncreated. This is exactly what the Quran says. Say God is one, unique, eternal, self-sufficient. He begets not, nor was he begotten. He's uncreated. And there is nothing like him. He's immaterial. He's outside of the universe. Yeah. So just using our aql in Islam is our intellect. Reflection, as the Quran always tells us to reflect. He uses the word yatafakkarun, for those who reflect. Because the Quran is for reflecting human beings. So we come to the conclusion that there must be a God. For me, I think that's irrefutable evidence there. And here we get to the point where the whole logical argument falls apart and where we see that this video is essentially just a whole big waste of time. Much like Christian apologist William Lane Craig, how can we link this timeless, spaceless, immaterial creator to the God of Islam? Just because the Quran describes him that way? So what? I could just make up a religion and fabricate this whole holy book and describe my God in that way. That doesn't mean the contents of this book actually come from the true creator of the universe, does it? Can you see where the problem is here? William Lane Craig can use the same exact argument to justify that his Christian version of God is the true and accurate one. So who do we believe? That's the thing with this argument. You need to tack on all this other stuff to it and you'll hear Muslims talking about scientific miracles in the Quran, prophecies and whatever. So the link still has to be made. This argument is incomplete. And then what I would say now is, well, is God an absentee landlord? He just give you the keys and go away. No, how could we apply something to God that we never apply to ourselves? I've got a Blackberry, right? Mm. What came with my Blackberry? A manual came with my Blackberry. No. Human beings made this no. and they made the manual. No. So we make manual for things we're saying God wouldn't give us guidance? We're, we're actually Allah. being saying lesser for the being that created the whole universe? Yeah. We must be chiefs if we think that, man. We must be crazy. So the point uh, is, it only makes sense that he gave us revelation. Ah, uh, saving the worst for last. Why can't God be an absentee landlord? So we create manuals for our blackberries. What an incredibly huge assumption Sortsis makes here. Let's say this God exists. Why would this thing necessarily give us guidance 
just because it's powerful. Why is it thinking lesser of this god if it doesn't care about us? Does power necessitate love and care? Using the logical arguments that Sorcis has just presented, he can't rule out the possibility that God is indifferent, that he doesn't care about us. This is such a bad, glaring assumption that he makes here. I can't believe that he's a respected public speaker. It just shows the incredible narcissism and arrogance of human beings to think that if we care and we would give guidance and all that, then necessarily the whole universe has to as well. That This whole universe revolves around us. When we consider the vastness of the universe and how small and insignificant our planet is, it seems like it would make sense to say that this creator would be indifferent to us. What makes us so special? We think we're special. And that's what it all comes down to. It might just be possible that things like love and empathy are just confined to us humans and other animals and maybe other alien species if they exist. To say that this must also be true of the creator of everything just because this creator is powerful is the worst assumption in this whole video. And I'm just intrigued to ask you, what is holding you back from being a Muslim? And do you see yourself as being one? Um, I'm not ignorant to the idea. I mean, I'm slowly learning. I don't, I'm not going to I don't know a lot about the religion. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say 100% I, I feel that I'm going to convert, but even though, like, for example, he's given me very good evidence to suggest there's, there's a God. <laughs> but um, sometimes you have to believe something 100%. Just to be and sure, man. me, as, I'm quite doubtful about anything. I'm so indecisive about everything. I go in the shop, I don't know what to buy. So for me, maybe more than the average person, it might take a bit longer to be 100% sure of what path I want to take. Mm -hmm. I mean, I understand that, obviously, you shouldn't really take long. Death is promised to every man at the mm -hmm. end of the day. Do you know what I mean? So obviously I want to try and find the right path as quick as possible. I mean, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm young, I'm just trying to learn and, you know, hopefully find the right path, really. So I sincerely hope that the mostly silent atheist in this video didn't convert to Islam after this ridiculous argument and saw all the problems with it, but I guess we'll never know. I think the most important takeaway from here is that whenever we see a logical argument for a god from a Muslim or a Christian or whoever, you'll find that there's always going to be some unfounded assumptions in it. Theists want to claim that they're not solely relying on faith in their religions, but as we've seen from this example and from many other examples, that simply isn't true. You need blind faith to buy a weak argument like this one. So now we've come to the end of the video, and if you've made it this far, I'd really appreciate it if you liked this video, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. And as always, I'll be back with another video soon.